In this video, you're gonna create a home studio using a $20 reflector and the camera you already have. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pa. Welcome to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being back here with y'all. This is Master Your Craft. And part of mastering your craft is really understanding how little you need to capture great images. So let's create a minimalistic home studio. I'm also gonna work through and edit this image with you guys inside of Lightroom as well as Photoshop. So be sure to download the exercise file. Step number one, find a door. I know you all got a lot of excuses for, you know, things that you don't have, what you need and all. You got a door. If, if you don't have a door, work on finding a door first. Just any door will work. So all you're gonna do is open up the door and that's gonna give us a nice flat light kind of entering that doorway. Bonus tip here, depending on the color of your hallway, you might even get a little bit of fill or negative fill. If you know what I'm talking about, comment below and tell me that you're on the same wavelength. But let's leave that piece out of this video. Step number two, we need a background. So look, inside of every five-in-one reflector, this, is a five-in-one reflector. Inside of that is a scrim. I want you to grab that scrim out. And if you don't have a $20 reflector, buy one. Jump on the Adorama, grab one. It's a very useful tool and you should have it. But look, if you're like, hey, I don't wanna buy nothing, ever. Okay, fine. Grab a bed sheet. It could be a white bed sheet, it could be a black bed sheet, it could be any color in between. Just grab a bed sheet or a scrim and you're gonna hang it up. We're hanging it up on just a chair. You can use an A-clamp from Home Depot to adjust the height and voila, you have a background. Step three, go ahead and place your subject facing that open door. This is where that nice flat light is gonna land on your subject. You now have a background in place. And if you need to prop your subject up, you can use anything for them to sit on. It could be a stool, it could be whatever you have around the house, which I happen to have a uh, shipping box, actually, which came from Profoto. I'm sorry, Profoto. My son is sitting on your box that has gear inside of it. But it works, and he's light. Step four, dial in your exposure settings. So for this shot, I'm using the EOS R. I had on it a 50 millimeter prime. So any 50 prime on any camera is gonna give you a similar result, if not an identical result. So just because you don't have this one, don't worry. And if you don't have a dedicated camera, I'm gonna show you in a moment that you can do this with your phone too. So I would recommend shooting this wide open. Somewhere around F1.2 up to F2.8 is kind of where I would like to be. I'm gonna set this to 1 500 of a second and right around ISO 200 to get to the right exposure. Now you're ready to shoot away. But that brings me to step five, because what if you don't have a dedicated camera? Then you're simply gonna bust out your phone. And guess what? If you got portrait mode, fantastic. Turn it on. You're gonna zoom in and snap away. You're gonna get very good results either way. In fact, if I put these two images side by side, it might be a little bit difficult to tell which is actually which. I mean, look, I know you guys have an experienced eye and you can probably tell, but for most people, they'd be like, hey, both those shots look professional to me. So now let's go into the post side. I'm gonna show you guys how to edit the image. This is where you wanna pause the video. Make sure you've downloaded the exercise file. I'm gonna include the raw exercise file from the EOS R and let's work on it together. All right, so here's our raw file. Oops, I'm sorry. The, it was actually at f1.4, not 1.2. But you can still see a little bit of the edges of the reflector and that's totally okay. We're gonna remove that in post. I'm gonna show you how, you can crop it out, but let's show you a different way. So let's go ahead and edit this. Now, if I was typically editing on my own, what I would probably do this image is apply Visual Flow Pastel. So each of the Visual Flow packs come with a look and then those looks are adapted to each of the different lighting conditions. Now this lighting condition was soft light, right? So we're gonna select the soft light preset to get it to that look in soft light. But let's actually work this from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these adjustments. Let's create a new image. I'm gonna press Control, comma, no control apostrophe, that's what that's called. And then we're gonna get a virtual copy and reset this out. So this is gonna be the look that we're kind of going for. Um, we'll just go ahead and dial it in from the ground up so you guys can see exactly what's happening. We might skip over the HSL because that gets a little bit meaty, but let's do this. Let's drop 
first into the tone curve. Now what you see here is an S curve that's designed to increase exposure as well as contrast. I'm gonna talk all about tone curves in a second video, but for now, just make sure that you've selected the point curve and this is what you're gonna do. Hold down shift, click on that curve, that will constrain the movement to only vertical movement, so it's not gonna go side to side, okay? If you don't hold down shift, you're gonna go side to side all over the place. So I'm gonna raise it up to about here. You'll notice that it brightens up quite a bit as well because we're pulling up all the mid-tone values. So anything that we pull up is gonna brighten, anything that we pull down is gonna darken. So I'm gonna drop now into the shadows and pull down from the shadows, okay? So what we've done is we've simultaneously added contrast and we've also brightened the image. How does contrast work? It's super simple. Contrast is created by taking what's bright and making it brighter and taking what's dark and making it darker by simply pulling apart these two tones, right? So we've created contrast by doing that. Now I can also make tweaks to this. I can add another curve or another point on my curve to kind of pull up the mid-tones while leaving the shadows a little bit darker. That looks great. So now without even touching the base tones, I have this exposure bump and everything is looking really nice and handy dandy. Let me show you another trick here. What I'm gonna do is actually pull down from the top, okay? What this is gonna do is it sends anything that goes to white goes to a bright gray. And guess what? I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. What this is creating is a subtle matte effect to the image. I love that, we're mattifying. So all of this so far was created with just the tone curve. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and get to my white balance. Now I can do that by dialing it manually or you go super secret. Press W to bring up the white balance tool. I know you guys know how this works. You select a neutral color, but here's the thing. What we don't often think about, we think of selecting something that's actually white, right? Like I gotta select something white. No, look at what it says. It actually says pick target neutral. That's where a lot of people don't know that Lightroom doesn't need you to select something that's white. It needs you to select something that's just neutral in tone. It could be gray, it could be dark gray, it could be near black, it could be white, anything in between, so long as there's no other colors in it. So I'm gonna select the background, which I know is that scrim, and I know that that's a clean color. Okay, so at this point, now I can use my base tones for fine tuning. I could say the highlights look good, but I'm gonna pull down a little bit of the highlights and pull down a little bit of the whites. I'm gonna raise a little bit of the shadows and raise the blacks just a bit, okay? For clarity, I'm gonna drop the clarity just a bit. I don't need any dehaze. I do wanna kinda tweak the vibrance of it. Skin tones are just a little bit too vibrant for me, but we're gonna do that in our HSL. Okay, so coming down to the HSL, if I go back to that prior image, you can see that we're doing a lot of shifting for the pastel color tone. Now this doesn't necessarily have the right white balance, um, but let's go ahead and do some of that shifting. What I'm gonna do actually is shift some of the saturation. So I'm gonna leave most everything else. I'm gonna pull the saturation down a little bit on the oranges. What I just did was I select the dropper tool for HSL and I'm targeting the tones that I want to adjust. So rather than simply pulling over here, I'm actually dropping it right into the image because then it's gonna help me to adjust other neighboring tones. For example, it dropped the reds a little bit because there are some reds in that area, but I'm gonna pull it down even a little bit more. Next, under saturation, I'm gonna pull down the blues a bit to get a little more of a subtle blue hue in the pants. And that's looking nice. That's looking real nice. Now, if I want, I can actually brighten just skin tones by raising the luminance on oranges, okay? So I'm gonna do this a little bit on oranges and on yellows. Let's go up just a, just a smidge, all right? Okay, now I'm gonna start dropping down. We're gonna add a tiny bit of warmth into the image. Here's another fun thing that you might not know about split toning. Click on the highlights, drag right into the image, and now I have an eyedropper that can pull in colors directly from my image. So I'm gonna pull over an area of skin tone that I like, and then I'm simply going to reduce saturation, okay? So this is just gonna add a subtle amount of warmth into those highlights. Then I'm gonna do the same thing in my shadows. I'm gonna drop into the shadows, pull from an area of shadow that I like, and then simply reduce saturation. Okay, to write about here. Now we get this nice little kind of toning over the image that sort of 
tightens things up a little bit, okay? I like the way it looks. We're gonna change the warmth last. Let's just keep scrolling down. We can zoom in right now and see sharpness wise. Um, the image is actually pretty sharp. If I want a bit of refined sharpening, I can do that. Check this out. You can hold down alter option and it's gonna do, whoop, I press spacebar. It's gonna do various things. So if I click on radius, what it's actually gonna show me is a mask of how the sharpening radius is gonna affect detail. So I wanna set this to a fairly low radius so that it's only affecting kind of the, the larger lines in the image. If I click on detail and increase, this gives me another mask that shows what is the detail it's gonna be sharpened. I wanna lower this as well because if I increase detail significantly, it's gonna sharpen all the pores of the skin. I don't wanna do that. I wanna leave the pores kind of intact um, while sharpening like stronger areas of lines. So now I'm gonna do one last thing. If I zoom back out, I'm gonna to go to mask and raise the mask holding alter option. And look at this. You have a mask that's now telling you exactly what's being sharpened. So if I go up to 80, I know that I'm only sharpening the strong lines of the image and all the pores are left intact. The beauty of all that is now if I zoom in and I increase sharpness, look at how it's only affecting lines, larger lines. So I can increase sharpness even higher knowing that I'm not affecting anything else in the image. Cool, right? Here's another little trick. If you raise a little bit of the noise reduction, you can actually increase sharpening to get those edges while using noise reduction to soften a little bit of these details in the skin. Holding down alter option, once again, you can kind of see the mask and what's being affected. So I'm just gonna leave detail where it's at at 15 or at 50 and leave luminance at, at 15, okay? That's a good enough amount that it's not gonna be noticeable. It's just gonna subtly soften kind of the pores on the skin while sharpening all the details in the image. You guys can take that little gem, put it in your pipes and smoke it, like my dad would say. All right, let's go down to lens correction. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go enable profile correction. This is gonna remove the natural vignetting. Why do I wanna remove that on this shot? Because this is a bright image and on a bright image, the natural vignetting, it kind of distracts from the, the, the overall image, right? On a bright, when an image has bright edges, I like those edges to stay bright. So in this case, I'm gonna remove it. So enable profile correction, it automatically removes that. If you wanna make any more of the vignetting correction, you can always adjust up as well and it'll increase that effect. Okay, so with that now, I'm gonna go ahead and just come up to white balance and set an appropriate white balance, which I think is right about here, okay? So if I click reset, this is where we started, this is where we ended. Now let's go ahead and fix the corners, okay? So I'm gonna select the spot removal tool, press Q to do so, make sure it's set to heal. What I also like to do for this is if you select a, a, a feather that's kind of high, when it creates the effect, it sometimes creates a, a weird transition. So specifically for this type of uh, spot, I'm gonna actually lower the feather all the way and then heal. Okay, and then we get a very nice and convincing heal without any weird you know, transitions in color. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and we're gonna heal that out. Okay, this one on this side looks a little bit like we need a tweak. So just pull this into an area of more similar color. So that way it's kind of sampling from an area that's a little bit closer and you should get a bit of a, a better overall result. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And you can always play with the feather after the fact. So if you're like, oh yeah, the feather is kind of messing it up, then raise the feather and see if you can get a subtle, a more subtle transition there. So that's a super easy way to fix stuff like that and to stay inside of Lightroom. But let's do this. Let's say we wanna go and just take this image into Photoshop to get a little bit more of a convincing effect. I wanna show you how to do the same thing inside of Photoshop and get a little more refined with it. It's very easy to make these fixes in Photoshop. And I almost think like in cases like this, if you're gonna spend more than 30 seconds on it, you should really jump into Photoshop for this. So we're gonna jump in just for workflow purposes, press Control J or Command J to jump this to a new layer. So I go, yeah, you know, Lightroom didn't do the best job of this. Um, so I'm gonna reselect this. I'm just gonna use a mouse for right now. Just select this area and you can press J and then press Shift J to cycle to the patch tool and simply drag it down and repatch that area. And you can see that the transition here is much more accurate inside of Photoshop than it is inside of Lightroom. In addition, in a spot like this, it would be difficult for Lightroom to be able to handle this. So what I'm gonna do is press S. 
S is gonna bring up my clone stamp tool. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option, click, and we're gonna just sample from right up there. All I'm doing is disconnecting the color between these two areas, right? Now I can do the same trick, press J, make a selection right around this, and normally I would use my Wacom tablet, but this is pretty simple stuff. So we're just gonna make that selection and drag it up now, and because it's separated, we're not gonna get a weird blend between the pant leg. So very quickly, we can make quick and simple work of that. I kinda like the fact that he's sitting on a shipping box. I think it looks cute, uh, and it's kinda part of it. You can also, while you're here, work into other areas if there's little patches of skin that you wanna kinda correct. Um, or do whatever. Now that we're inside of Photoshop, I would just use like a, a, a spot healing brush and just kind of go over these areas quickly to make little little fixes, okay? Usually I like to fix things that are, are temporary, like, like pimples or blemishes that are temporary. Usually I leave things that are, um, you know, like facial features, okay? And now my kiddo is all done. Oh, there's a little red spot on his cheek right here. I might go patch tool, shift, J to cycle to the patch tool, select that little area and go up and just move it a little bit. Okay, this looks super cute. Now I'm gonna save this out. Press Control S to save that out. Let's go back to Lightroom. I'm gonna show you one additional little tip here. So I don't want you to take this too far, okay? So we're gonna go into Adjustment Brush and I'm using the Retouching Toolkit. This is from Visual Flow. But if you don't have it, that's okay. I just want you to dial in the settings. So we're gonna go to Eyes Whiten. All of these are pre-sampled settings that have been tested across multiple images. So they make multiple adjustments. So make the same adjustment and you can save it out as a little freebie preset for you guys. What I'm gonna do is paint this right over the whites of the eyeball. Okay, I'm gonna paint it right here. Now the thing when you're, when you're doing stuff like this, how do you make it look convincing where it's not over the top? What I would say is zoom out and go to grid view. Press G to go to grid view and look at the eyes and see if they jump out at you. If they're kind of jumping out at you like alien eyes, you've gone too far. So then jump back in the image and dial it down a little bit. So from here, I'm just gonna dial this down a little bit and you can do that by selecting the pin, holding alter option. And again, this is the benefit of tested presets is because I can actually pull down and it's gonna incrementally adjust everything to get to the right effect. Okay, so holding Alter Option, dragging to the left, will reduce the strength of this effect. Next, holding Alter Option, I'm going to turn off Auto Mask. I'm gonna paint off in the area of shadow on the eyes. So again, I'm kind of painting light into the areas of brightness and painting shadows into the areas of darkness with this eye brightener. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go down to Intensify Iris, and we're gonna paint this right around the actual iris on both sides, okay? If you wanna be very precise with this, I would recommend doing it twice, uh, one for each eye, but usually I'll just kind of sneak it by. I'm holding down Alt or Option, and I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm painting it off the shadow areas, okay? Making sure it's refined. I'm gonna do the same zoom out where I kind of look from this grid view. I make sure that it doesn't look like alien eyes staring at me. If I want to reduce the strength, which I do wanna reduce the strength of, oh, stop zooming. I do wanna reduce the strength a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and select it, hold down Alter Option. And again, if you don't have that preset, just go ahead and pause, dial it in, and you'll have that adjustment. Those are little, two little freebies from VF Presets. If y'all are enthusiasts or professionals who want a dedicated preset system that's designed by lighting conditions uh, and a retouching kit for Lightroom, I'd recommend you go and check out vfpresets.com. But there we go. We are all done. Now, this is kind of crazy considering we created this in just the doorway of your home using things that you already have and with whatever camera you already have. So the point is create no matter what. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. Please comment below. I do read your comments to get ideas for future videos. So let me know what you guys would like to see next. In the meantime, I'd love for you all to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on notifications when you do. Otherwise, YouTube thinks that you're just subscribing by accident. I don't get it. I don't understand. You guys can find me at Born Uncreative on TikTok as well as Pi Gersa on Instagram. And if you enjoy my style of teaching the why behind everything that photographers do, then be sure to check out our professional education systems at slrloungeworkshops.com. I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place, right here on Adorama TV. Peace.